sun shines on today. What a wonderful wedding there will be. What a wonderful day for you and me. Church bells will chime. You will be mine in apple blossom time. I'll be with you when in apple blossom time. Then what will you do? Then I'll be with you to change. Your name to mine. When will that be? One day, maybe in May. Then what will you do? I'll come and say to you, dear, happy the bride that the sun shines on today. Then what a wonder! You're crazy. Where'd you get that? He'll never know what's missing. Thomas, I think he's still back there. You still see him? No. But I know he's still back there. I can feel it. What's wrong? Why are we stopping? We ran out of gas. Forgot to watch the gauge. Now we're sitting like ducks. What are we going to do? We can't go back. I know, and we can't stay here either. They could either be only a mile just behind, they could be on a wrong road a long way from here. I don't want to guess which one. There's a barn over there. We could hide for a while. Maybe it could buy us some time or, or something. That's Mr. Lidmire's place. Floyd, Floyd will check here. He knows Mr. Lidmire helps him with supplies. I think he may be loyal to Floyd. We can't chance it. But that barn looks like he never uses it. You know, at least he won't be checking it today. Mr. Lidmire's out of town this week. Let's get this thing off the road. I'll push and you steer. Can you do that, Maddie?
He's gonna try to kill us. You know he's got the curse on us now. No, oh, Maddie, don't be a bunny. He would never go that far. I mean, I'm his nephew and you're his wife. I'm not saying he won't try to break a few bones, though. You don't know his dark side like I do. He will kill us. He's determined. And he won't stop looking until he finds us. Well, we can wait until it's late. And then when it's all dark outside, I'll walk to a gas station and fill up a jug. I mean, maybe it'll give us enough fuel to park up somewhere else until morning. And maybe by then he will have given up. He might give up, but the men he's paying to help find us won't. I know he schmoozed with a private dick from Palm Springs, too. Thomas. I'm so scared. How do you know he has droppers coming to find us? He knows you know these roads better than he does. And for that he needs help. From muscle, like Lenny and Wren. Floyd's the high pillow, and they're loyal to his money. And willing to do whatever Floyd might ask of them. I wouldn't put it past Howie to throw his hat in the ring either. Maddie, look. Maddie, look. He's going to be looking for the wheels. As long as this flivver is either in here or in some other state by morning, they won't find us. It'll be a clean sneak. Let's try this again. Gentlemen, it could have gone any direction from here. I've seen as how Thomas knows these roads uh, as well, if not better than the both of you. I suggest we cover all the routes. Now, if you guys see his car, you know what to do. Just don't put him on ice yet. I want him to know my wrath, not yours. By the way, brought a little fuel and some uh, motivation for you guys. And I don't have anywhere to go. Neither one of them have probably ever been more than 100 miles from here. Yeah. They'll be back when they feel you've had time to cool down, boss. Now, Lenny, why don't you let me decide that? I think they know me better than that. And Ren, if a cool down is what they think I need, well, they're even more dull-minded than I thought they were. By the way, don't either of you go calling in any missing persons report to the black and white. Otherwise, we're all going to be busting rocks. All right, let's go. All right. Escaping from my husband is something I've needed to do for quite some time. I should have resisted my parents when they convinced me it was for my own good to marry him. I should have called all bets off before it was too late. My parents are dead now, so they'll never know that they were wrong. They were no match for an undetected gas leak turned fire that got them in their sleep back in 41. Or so that's what I was told by the officials. The problem was the Tri-Town area was cramped and prone to corruption. When the Imperial Valley earthquake hit in May of 1940, there was rumor that Floyd attempted to have the local newspaper there dropped within hours and pin it on the Shaker. 
although it was on the other side of the San Jacinto Mountains and past the Salton Sea Lake, he wanted to put them out of business so that he would control that area as well. But the year that began my womanhood on the wrong side was 1938. I was barely a young woman at the time, and Floyd, well, he was much older. That's him, Floyd Sloan. He was a new widower after the death of his wife, Ruth. Floyd had one son with her, and his name was Irwin. A really good kid he was. And so was Floyd's nephew, Thomas Wilder. Thomas and Floyd were related by marriage and not by blood, so Thomas was only half accepted by Floyd as family. So I cleared those weeds out like you said, but I'm out of gas. Do you want me to go to Creek Road and get some more? Yes, make sure you take it to West. Make sure it fills it up completely this time. Patty, you haven't met my nephew Thomas. No. Thomas, Matt. It's lovely to meet you, Thomas. <laughs> it's nice to meet you. You too. Okay. Floyd was just starting to take over the family business, the local newspaper, as his parents moved away to travel, and my family saw this as an opportunity for me to have what they never had. Looking back, I think they had their own interests as well. Floyd saw the business more like running a protection or numbers racket than just being a newspaper. One thing is all he knew. Control. The most affluent people in the community patronized him for his power to advertise for them and to report, or not report, what they wanted him to. For him, this meant everything. Lucrative bribes, high social status, luxurious perks and the like. He put on a great act, enough to make Cagney jealous. Do you? Paid to drive, not to engage in small talk, if you don't mind. Quite the ladies, man. Think about that. Uh, hey, yeah, that was. Oh my God. Hey. Oh, jeez. I told you. <laughs> Why is not for kidney gardeners? <laughs> you ain't kidding. <sighs> Woo! <laughs> Thanks for taking me up there, finally, hey, guy. I'm proud of you, man. You were brave. <laughs> well, you know, I pissed my pants a little bit, but. <laughs> oh. Howie. Boy. Hey, darling. <laughs> so how'd we look up there, Ryan? Great. Huh? Oh, God. What a fine machine. A fine machine she is. You know, she could help us win the war. You don't say. This plane right here, huh? Yep. With her light frame and top speed of 126 miles an hour. She's like the perfect lady. You learn to fly her right, and she'll bring you home every time. Hey, Howie, why don't you teach me? <laughs> what? <laughs> why? What, what is it? Why is that so laughable? <laughs> to <What>? fly? <laughs> what? <laughs> well, it's just a little old to be learning new tricks, don't you think? No, it's not that. He doesn't have the time. He's too busy doing other things. Oh man, we got you. I'll teach you to fly. But what's in it for me? <laughs> the 
past ten years with him have proven to be different than what my parents had envisioned my life to be. From the beginning, it was apparent that Floyd didn't respect women at all, much less a teenage girl. He would speak down to Lula, although she took care of almost everything that needed to be done in Floyd's personal and professional life. She was a good woman and hard-working, probably his best and most honest employee, and for that got treated as such. Lula was his housekeeper and personal assistant. She didn't have her own family. This was where she called home. I always felt that she wanted to be somewhere else. There are a lot of lonely people in my world. Thank you, Lula. I never get it in the right place. Oh, it's okay. Lula, I pay you for competence, not insolence. Whatever do you mean? Why do you allow her to go out in public representing my name looking like that. She is not a porcelain doll. She is a woman and a human being, just as I. A stern look from Lula and a look at his own behavior didn't deter him one bit from continuing his ways. By the early part of this decade, he had gotten too comfortable. Floyd didn't even mind what his own son, Irwin, saw of him. <laughs> Call this pest? Huh? A little cycloptic monkey could have done a better job than this. You give the female gender a bad name. You know, if it wasn't for me, you'd be just another dirty whore in the streets. And look at you, you can't even have a baby. You can't even give me a child. At least Ruth did that for me. Don't even look at me! Look at you! Your hair's a mess, you dress like my grandmother, and you're never presentable when I have acquaintances over. Come here! I couldn't have answered that question myself. The truth was, when I looked into the mirror, I didn't see myself. I only saw a fragile, lifeless piece of what was left of the young woman that I was supposed to have become. All in all, I would call Floyd a true tyrant. Maddie, everything's going to be okay. You know that, right? If there's one thing you can do right now, it's to trust that I will protect you. I would die before I let him hurt you. If we wait this out, we'll both be fine. Hey, look. I saved up and got one of those new Galvin Brothers radios. Thomas was the one man I had come to trust over the past years. He would come over to the house, and each time we met, I felt more and more that we had something that could not be arranged as his Uncle Floyd and I had been. Oh. <laughs> there are no stores in town that have this. Where did you get this? <laughs> Remember the Time by Adrian Starr. <laughs> but Thomas, I told you about a lot of books and that was over a year ago. How did you remember this? This couple from Hartford stopped by the station to get gas wells there and 
the lady noticed me staring at that book on her dash, and she asked me where I was, and I told her that, you know, you had mentioned it to me before, but you didn't know where to get it. So, she said she had a couple more, and that you would appreciate it as much as her. Well, I don't know what to say, except Hartford's a long way from here. <laughs> but seriously, thank you, Thomas. Well, should we read it? Sure. <laughs> I hate to make you wait. Do you, do you want to read it with me? Okay. <laughs> All right. I didn't think of Thomas as a book man. He surprised me. There were lots of times he surprised me. We sat there reading that book for hours and discussing every page as if there were new discoveries with each word. You can't save that for the bebop room. Sound like a bunch of dying cats. <laughs> At that time, neither Thomas nor I had the means to do anything about the growing extent of our friendship, as there was no support from either of our families. I was an only child, and my parents only cared about somehow staying connected to Floyd and his money. Thomas's family catered to Floyd and the family business. Thomas was just as much an outsider in his family as I was in mine. Sometimes he would unknowingly give me a good reason to batch up some of my lemonade, or at least attempt to. My lemonade wasn't the best, I must admit, but Thomas would try to make me feel good on the simplest of levels. I knew he didn't like it, but I also knew he must have liked me to try to make me feel good. As we became closer, we feared that Floyd would catch on to what was becoming a less than innocent friendship. We found ourselves hiding the time we spent together from Floyd. Although we never made this an understanding, we just both seemed to have felt the need to do this. We hadn't even really done or said anything inappropriate. It was just this feeling of guilt. The truth was, I felt no guilt deep inside, especially when I knew Floyd had other things on his mind as well. Floyd's socials and other preoccupations ensured him temporary female companionship. I now believe that he never traded me for any of them, only because they were too strong for him. Oh, come on, Franco, you gotta get the ball over the net. But the net is higher on our side. <laughs> Franco, it's not the net. You just eat like a girl. Oh, shut up. Match point. Uh. 
Good one. <laughs> Game, set, and match, gentlemen. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. On, Frank, are your wife working that was for the a other fine team game. Or what? Yeah, really I'm beginning game. to think it wasn't a great idea to have her out here. Now that was a fine service, Howie. And a fine service it is. Yeah, how do you hit the ball like that, Howie? Well, I guess it just comes natural. Hey, Floyd, how about you ask him how to tie your laces, too? Actually, Floyd's better at untying laces. Right, Mr. Man? <laughs> <laughs> We all may have been fooled for a long time by Floyd, but not Lula. She saw through everything, including when it came to me and Thomas. She never said much about it, but I got the feeling that she didn't give two bits about the time Thomas and I were spending together. I look back and wonder why she asked so many questions about simple things. I believe now that she secretly wanted the kind of friendship that Thomas and I had. Do you dream, Maddie? Do I dream? Yes. Of course I dream. What prompts you to ask me that? I know you dream in your sleep, of course. But when you're in the presence of Floyd, do you dream with your eyes open? Lula, I don't know what you mean. Well, let me ask you this. When you and Thomas when you and are around each other, what do you think of? Are you thinking ahead? You know, in time. <laughs> you. <laughs> <laughs> You know I heard you two talking. I know you did. I was just messing with her. It's not like I'm sweet on Matt Maddie or anything like that. Mm-hmm. I mean, who would... Mm-hmm. Oh, I would never. You go on, honey. I don't hear or see anything that goes on around here. <laughs> we did have one small support, and that was Irwin. Irwin was not allowed to do manual labor. Floyd claimed that no legitimate Sloan would weather themselves and ultimately their name. This told me a lot of how he felt about Thomas as Thomas was born into the Wilder family, a simple family like the one I came from. Thomas worked for Floyd and did almost all of the manual labor as he didn't have any higher training. Irvin was the only child from Floyd's first marriage to Ruth. I had always been told that back in 36 she was taken by snatchers, hoping to cash in on Floyd's fortune by way of ransom money. She was found beaten to death. And curiously, Floyd remained not a penny poorer. We could count on Irwin to not tell Floyd of our meetings. In fact, he often covered for us. Yeah. Hey, Tommy. Hey. Oh, yeah. You going to stay for tomorrow? No, we're going to have a picnic. I was just, uh, I was talking to Irwin earlier. He's coming! and Irwin. No one the only difference was that Thomas and I seemed to be coming saps for each other. Thomas was the opposite of his Uncle Floyd, and I could confide in him about anything. It were these confessions to Thomas of my true unhappiness that have led to this moment. This moment that has taken me from that hell, but now leaves me in uncertainty. And for many reasons, although I know I'm running for my life now, it still seems worth it.
we've covered every possible link to the state line and back. As have I. There is one more thing we can try. What? Well, Thomas is friendly with Mr. Lidmeyer. Now his farm's down a private road. And I'm willing to gamble that Thomas wouldn't think we'd take that direction. And I wouldn't put it past Mr. Lidmeyer to hole him up there. Huh. Well, you two are finally starting to earn your money. Let's not be too sure about Mr. Lidmeyer, though. He's loyal to me. All right, let's go. When we get there, I want you guys to wait for me at the end of the road. Wait for me, I'm going in alone. I want to find what they're doing. All I need is a good reason. I need a reason! Go! Thomas was a left shoe in that family. Easy going and mostly carefree. But Floyd, simple things such as dinner would even become an event to be managed only by him. So Floyd, what will you be having off the menu? Oh, I'm gonna have that uh, pansy ham. It's got a pineapple salsa, green bean salad, and a butter roll, just like we had last time. Hmm, that sounds fantastic. That's delicious. And, uh, Maddie, what will you be having? Oh, um. She's going to be having the same, uh, just without the butter roll. We don't want her getting that chunky Hollywood figure that you see gaining steam in Hollywood. Now do we? <laughs> I wish I had just left him, but at that time my parents were still alive and I didn't want to disappoint. As well, I didn't have the best education or field of trade to be on my own, but there was one person that didn't have to worry with disappointment, that had some education and had fields of trade, and that was Lula. I have everybody in commerce waiting to have these filled. You will finish this job! Then you will ask me nicely. I don't have to ask you anything at all. You work for me, and that is all! You're right. That is all. What do you think you're doing? What Maddie wishes to God that she could do. What would that be, I suppose? To go out and be the woman she wants to be. Is this true? Huh? Never mind. Look, I have people waiting on these. You will finish it! You will finish this! I will burn powder on you right now! Hey, hey! hey. <laughs> Look, there's no need for that. There's no need for that. You're right. There isn't. Maddie, hon, you're free to come with me. I won't be back. And you don't have to either. May God help you, darling. Well, now I suppose you can finish what she couldn't, don't you? Huh? In fact, why don't we transfer all of her chores over to you? It'll make better use out of you instead of just wasting your time with my nephew. He probably just does that to humor you. He doesn't just cause, cause he's like that. After that, things did get worse. Irwin would help to not make them seem so bad. How Irwin came from Floyd, I do not know. His mother must have been a good woman. About a year ago, I saw my father beat you for nothing. I wanted to do something, but I couldn't. 
I tried that once before with my mother, and things didn't work out so well because a stack of things happened after that. The next day, she went missing, and I figured she just up and left. The day after that, my father put in the paper that she was being held captive by ransomers. The day after that, the police found her body. They said she had been beaten to death, and the ransomers only meant to damage her enough to show my father that they were serious, and they got carried away. Well, I don't believe that. At least not anymore. What else could have happened? Why don't you believe it anymore? Because I saw her body. And I saw yours too. I couldn't help but notice the similarities. He beat you the exact same as he beat her. The same bruises, in the same places. I just have this feeling. I feel like my father is the Dutch Schultz of this town. My father's at work right now. Where, where do you think he's going? Well, you know, I got drafted. They're sending me off to fight. I haven't told my father this yet. I'm just going to leave come next Monday. They're sending a bus to get about 13 of us in the county. But don't tell Thomas either. He'll think he can talk me and the government out of it. <laughs> well, I'm gonna go get some more pop. Nothing ever came of it that day. Irwin's belief about how his mother died. This is where Thomas was strong. He never blew a fuse without good reason. No one really knows for sure about what happened to her. It was just Irwin's feeling. That was one of the last conversations I ever had with Irwin. He never came back. He was killed in the Battle of Iwo Jima about two years ago. Look at him. He's so proud. He would have been big hit, man. It would have been great. Thomas and I visit him quite often, and I was never sure when or if Floyd ever did the same. Everyone seems to die around me. Is heaven only for the dead? And is hell for the living and dead? Welcome to the Tin Can Theater. Enjoy your evening. Welcome to the Tin Can Theater. Enjoy your evening. Floyd and I were at the Tin Can Theater for the production of Turn and Go with Howie and Cecilia. I thought that this may have been the night when I finally acted on my own, follow Lula's lead, and leave.
Cecilia seems like a nice lady, but sometimes I think she is a slave in her own world and either doesn't know it or doesn't mind it. Girl to smile. I can't blame her. After all, Floyd doesn't have an airplane. seems to me that he may be a good husband to her. But you never know. Other people miscalculated Floyd for the better as well. Gentlemen, boys and girls, the Tin Can Theatre proudly presents to you, it's the greatest show in town, the production of Turn and Go. Oh, well, good day, Mr. Dog. You're looking rather out of sorts today. Why the long face? Don't tell me you missed out on another raise at work again. Are you... Having a conversation with that dog? <laughs> no, don't be ridiculous. Mr. Dog can't talk. Why, then, who are you talking to? I was practicing lines for my big audition on Broadway. I got a train ticket leaving on Monday. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Hey, you want to see our act? Well, okay. <clears throat> I'm sick. Oh, <laughs> You know, that number is going to pop someday, and everyone will know it. You just wait and see. Hold on. Hey, Mr. Dog, let's show this man what we can do. The woman standing there on stage, not impressed by the sideshow. Only the sideshow I was watching was Floyd's and the show he likes to put on for his acquaintances. The dog playing the supporting role was charming, though. More charming than the supporting role that Howie and the others play for Floyd. Sadly, I couldn't find the courage to leave him that night. I began to wonder whatever happened to Lula. I had seen her in passing a few times, but never got a chance to talk to her because I was always with Floyd. We did finally see each other in free conditions. Maddie? Lula! Well, well, well. How have you been, Missy? Okay, I guess. I don't have to ask you. Look at you! And you. Maddie, I want you to meet my husband. 
This is Carl. We met at the Fall Festival in 43. Um, 44. Okay, 44. It don't matter none. We found each other and we couldn't be any better. I've heard a lot about you, Maddie. Shh. She's gonna think I've been gossiping about her. <laughs> How long did you have to put up with this? <laughs> so, what have you been doing with yourself? Well, I started my own handmade quilting business. I work out of my home so no one can shut me down. I found out rich folks pay big for those things. Really? I didn't know you made quilts. I never did any around your place because I didn't want Floyd knowing what I could do. He would use me, don't you know? I hold no doubts about that. So have you always known how to do that? Well, I worked for this kind family in Arkansas back in the ancient times when I was coming up a young lady. They taught me how to quilt and make the best fried okra and squash this side of the Mississippi. Mm -mm. Boy, do I miss your okra and squash. Well, I'd better be getting back. Floyd will be home soon. I wonder where I am. Maddie, are you all right? Have you been taking care of yourself? I am. But did you hear? We lost Irwin in the war. I read. There's always a reason. And you know that. Yes. But I'm doing okay. And so is Thomas. That was the last time I saw her. About two months ago, I believe. I found out later that she had moved with Carl to his home state of Louisiana. Did either of you even see this? Yeah, huh? but I didn't know it was hers. I'm still right here with the cars. I'm gonna go down there to check to see if they're here. I don't want anybody being warned by these cars. All right, you got it, boss. Damn, man. Earlier today, Floyd and Thomas got into a fight. If you have one, I have a word with you. All right, but I won't be able to get to your car till tomorrow. No, it's not about the car. I need you to stop spending time with Maddie. No, I demand you stop spending time with her. Why is that? Well, lately, she's been changing. She's becoming less obedient, and I don't like it. You're changing her. I wasn't there, but but I believe it was over me. Thomas wouldn't tell me why they fought. How could I have done that? I know what you're doing! Look, I know the things you're putting in her head. Did you ever realize that she's not the 16-year-old child you married anymore? You need to stop running your mouth right there, boy. You better stop your mouth from running right there. Are you afraid you're going to lose her? What are you grifting at? You lost her long ago. Have you not been aware for the last 10 years? She gave you everything and you don't even know she's alive most of the time. Oh, she gave me everything? She gave you everything, including her right to her own life. I gave her a life. I gave her a life she wouldn't have had otherwise. Yet something tells me I don't think she would thank you for that. 
got something to say to me? Huh? You got something to say? Well, you better just say it. Come on, say it! Say it! She's wising up to you. Come on. Come on. <laughs> you're, you're weighing over your head, boy. Come on. Come on. Come here. Come here. Look at me. You're dead to me! Telling me that the fight had nothing to do with me. Once again, that's Thomas, thinking of me first. All I know is that, one way or another, there is a reason why I had to marry Floyd. I like to believe it was because it led me to know Thomas and to be with him. Dead or alive, I believe we are meant to be together. Maddie, we have to get away from here. I know I do, and I think you know that as well. What? What's going on? He did that to you? I'm leaving here, Maddie. And I want you to come with me. But what about him? He won't just let that happen. I know. We have to leave quickly without telling him, and we have to do it now. You do went out of this, don't you? Yes. Yes, more than anything. What do we do? Meet me in front of the house in one hour. Have your things. We will become something. I want to so bad. Okay, one hour. Okay, one hour. I've never been that happy and afraid at the same time. my things together within minutes and when Thomas came back we left like lightning. Maddie, we're finished. You're both finished. You to go get Lenny. Tell him we're going hunting. Got it. Boss.
Is it a good time to go for some gas yet? No, not yet. It's only nine o'clock. They might still be out looking for us. But when it gets close to midnight, I can go out to the gas station on Route 12 and Creek Road intersect, and I can control the pumps there. Why not go to the road and we hitch a ride? Because that first car could be them or anyone they've hired to come find us. It's like you said, you never know who has clued into us. Thomas? What makes a man be like that? Like him? It's above my pay grade. I've always wondered why. Why he would tie himself to a woman he never really wanted to love. Why take me from the start? Why keep me for so long? And why is he so bent on getting us back? Look, he's the kind of bad business that wants someone to wait on him while looking pretty for his events and socials. You're a beautiful woman, Maddie. He recognized that as any man in the world would. He also wanted someone young who would not question him. You fit the bill for him in his mind. The reason why he wants us back so bad is because he can't lose. He can't stand the thought of losing. He doesn't need you or me any more than he needs to be trampled by a bull. That's right. Well, I've had a lot of water. I'll be right back. Don't go too far now. That's it. That's what I want. I want to be happy. And I want it to show through to everyone. I now know that there's only one way for that to happen for me. Thomas? I love you. I don't care about his power and money. I never did. The worst part was my own family didn't care that I didn't care. You're the only person who really sees me, who knows me and cares about me. Thomas, you're the only person I feel really wants me and I... Maddie, if the world knew what I knew about you, everyone would want you. You can believe me on that. You've just been locked away in that place for so long, the world just doesn't know about you yet. You've never been given the chance to be you. I'm the fortunate one. I want to give you the happiness you deserve. Even as much as you give me the happiness that I've been missing. The happiness I feel every time we're together, even though it's wrong and forbidden. But now it's free, with no consequence. That's Lidmeyer's dogs. They only bark when somebody comes around. It's him. He's looking for us. Come on. <sighs> Saw this coming. Yeah, who didn't? Thought it was bonkers over that kid from the start. Yeah. Kind of don't want to be around when he does find them. What gives? You know, you can rot your teeth out with that. What, do you keep your co coat stuck with those things? 
<laughs> yeah, I do. As a matter of fact, you never know what flavor you're going to want for each situation you're in. Anyway, think of it this way. We help him. We know we got him in our pockets after this. He ain't going to turn us down for nothing. Listen. The dogs start barking. I think they're gone whoever it was. Thomas? I'm cold. Scram! I'm not getting juiced in a chair over this. Yeah, that makes two of us. Looks like it just grazed you. Here. Was it a gun? Who did it? I can't see anything. At all. I can't see you, Thomas. You're just still tired. It was just... It was just some thunder. I've been shot. Haven't I? Oh. oh. My head hurts. I, I can't breathe. I can't breathe. I'm scared, Tom. I 
I know. I know. I'll help you, Maddie. You're gonna be okay. Doesn't matter. Uh, are you okay? Will you get him? It doesn't matter. I'll get him and you're going to be okay, Maddie. I'm here, I'm always here. Maddie, I got him. It's over. We're free. So we're going to be okay then. Yeah. We're going to be okay.
Maddie, I have to leave for a minute. I'll be right back. I think I can get help. Maddie, uh, uh, I think help is on its way. Be happy. Will I? Will I be happy? Hey. Maddie, do you remember that time on Halloween when I pretended to be a candy beggar? And I stood out there on your porch on night with, uh, on my knees and I uh, had a sheet over me. I pretended to be a child dressed like a ghost. Yeah. Yeah. Uh. <laughs> Are you okay? Yeah, I'm okay. I'm just tired too. I stood out there all night, pretending to be one of the children, so that I could stay out there with you longer. Do you remember that? Yes. I, I, I would give the children just one piece of candy, so my candy bowl would last longer. So I could stay, stay out longer with you. Yeah. Yeah. I would be doing that myself. <laughs> and you remember when, when that time when Floyd had me come over your house and fix your water faucet when it broke. It, just, it took me all day even though I could have done it in an hour. <laughs> you remember that? Yeah. Oh. Oh. It didn't break on its own, did it? <laughs> no. I did it. <laughs> I broke it on purpose. I knew it. <laughs> Please, somebody help. Yeah. I'm dying happier than all the days that I lived. Stop it, you're not dying. We're gonna wake up in a hospital tomorrow and live together forever. We'll spend the rest of my life with you, Maddie. That is a promise. Huh?
this Wilder? I do. Maddie, I love you. That's you. You're Mrs. Maddie Wilder now. You always were. Shines on today. Then what? 